All right. It was the airport workers taking action in more than 20 cities. They were gathered at airports and terminals, and they also went to the United American and Delta Airlines corporate headquarters to demand good jobs and a living wage and all that stuff that oppressed workers of corporations who are making a freaking killing right now. Did you try to get an airline ticket anytime recently? Everything is a billion dollars, and that might be oil prices, or they might be using oil prices as an excuse to price gouge you more than they do by making you pay for the even the one piece of baggage. You can't even bring a one piece of baggage anymore on, on the plane. You have to pay for every single thing that's not closed on your back. Anyway, we covered that protest, the one happening in Chicago, in front of the United Headquarters at Willis Tower. Remember, Chicago is a union town. Here's our first video of our first speaker. She is the leader of the SEIU Local Chicago, which of course would be happy to represent the Chicago airline workers. This is Jeannie Katstrup. She's speaking up about the Un United having a lot of money and not, not paying their workers a living wage. She They are out front asking uh, United to sign this thing called the Good Jobs Pledge, which guarantees some standards at least for airport workers here. Oh, by the way, before we watch this video, I want to give you a little warning. Someone sounds a siren in the middle of it. So just so you know, wherever you're watching, the cops aren't at your house, your fire alarm's not going off, everything's fine. Here's the video. So United Airlines is on the fourth floor of Willis Tower behind us. To the 28th floor. And you tell me they can't afford to pay a living wage and give people the voice on the job that they deserve? Shame on you. A good airports uh, pledge had a lot of good stuff in it, like health care, uh, paid time off, et cetera, et cetera, I believe, if I'm looking at it properly. Now, I love what she said about Chicago being a union town. Chicago is a union town. It was the town where the teachers movement uh, union began in 1887. That was a long time ago when there weren't a lot of unions. Immigrant workers organized the meatpacking industry in the 1930s, and the demand for the eight-hour uh, workday took root right there in Chi town But of course, as union membership fell across the country, Illinois had been hard hit, uh, actually particularly hard hit, losing the third largest number of union members in the country. I think Michigan and Ohio were the other two. Uh, but a large part of this loss isn't because people were like, oh, I don't like unions. I think unions are corrupt. I am falling to the propaganda of the right wing. No, 
because they cut public sector jobs. That is why there's not as many union people. They cut people's jobs. People didn't just leave the union. Their good paying union job got taken from them as neoliberal economic policies pushed by both parties moved austerity measures forward and cut jobs from the private or the public sector. Now, these good folks have to get jobs in the private sector, who, as we all know, is motivated by ever increasing fiduciary obligations to investors, a.k.a. just like the excuse for just going for more and more profit, even when it literally means squeezing the lifeblood from the people who keep your company working. Ah, but anyway, I just also want to say it doesn't it's not the numbers that make Chicago a union town. It's a union town by culture. OK, the bears. That's where they got this. The bears. They didn't Saturday Night Live back then did not just make up this. It was, you know, that those were real people they based it on. <clears throat> and I know because I used to live there. And also Chicago has that old ass Wrigley Field. I took this picture last week. It still looks exactly like that. And Chicago has sausage everywhere. Kiabasa is like on sale at Starbucks over there. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm dying. Let's go to the second video and I'll talk about it in a minute. Their actions today that happened all along the East Coast from JFK down to Miami where airport <laughs> workers stand in solidarity with the workers here in Chicago to say, no mas, no more. Corporate greed has got to end. United has to raise wages and provide health care and living benefits to all airport workers at O'Hare. Are we going to make that happen? Yeah! And we have a worker who does baggage handling at Orlando that traveled to Chicago today. <laughs> Jackson Reed, who stands in solidarity with our demands on the United CEO, he better come to his senses and sign the good jobs pledge. Okay, this was uh, <laughs> this was Mary Kay Henry. She's the leader of the SEIU National. She mentions protests across the country and just you know gave the message of unity that United has to raise wages and provide health care, and that all of the workers are standing in solidarity. But I want to point out one thing. Take a look at this woman, John Carl. Put up the image. Take a look. She is the woman from Orlando who came to stand in solidarity. She is freezing her tuckets off. I have to tell you, I lived in Chicago for quite some time. It's the coldest I've ever been. I was literally standing with long underwear on, on underneath my clothes, underneath a very hard, like big REI coat or some one of those puffy coats, underneath the heated lamps on the outdoor subway platform. And I thought I was going to die. That wind off that lake, forget it. So she is really doing a service for her fellow airport workers. That one person who came... That means a lot. It means a lot. Sarah Nelson, she has uh, been on the show here a couple times. She, oh, no, nope, that's Mother Jones. We're going to the next video. Sarah Nelson uh, talked about workers' rights also being women's rights. She talked about Mother Jones. Let's listen to her video, and then I'll put up a cool quote. Yeah, Quinn Diaz, who is the president of the Association of Flight Attendants and goes into this tower and negotiates with United Airlines, and we'll see to their face right after this rally. You gotta sign the good airports pledge. Now, come on, come on, Scott Kirby, come on, say to their face right now. Just stick with us. I know, I know that the sound is a little like blowing out the speaker, but this is like a live event. So she is like yelling at hundreds of people in the street. So here it is. After this rally, you gotta.
calling for a general strike. That's the, uh, the president of the Association for uh, Flight Attendants, one of the largest unions here in our country. I love that she brought up Mother Jones. Let's put up this cool image and props to Giancarlo, our editor, for, put, for making this cool image. God Almighty, this is the quote. She said, God Almighty... The, the real quote is God Almighty made women and the Rockefeller gang of thieves made ladies. I love how she talked about uh, the oppression. Uh, do you, we get this, what this quote is about, right? Uh, that 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 the, the people who are um, the gang of thieves, the oppressors, want you to be a lady, want you to keep your mouth shut. It's not polite for you to speak up and blah, 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 insert bullshit here. Uh, but she was not having it. And I love that. By the way, if you don't know who Mother Jones is, she's the most famous female labor activist. Uh, second only now to Sarah Nelson, <laughs> who might be the head of the SEIU at some point. I don't know. We'll have to see. She's already pretty powerful with what she's already doing. Uh, she, uh, Mother Jones was in the 19th century. Her name, real name was Mary Harris Jones. She was a self-proclaimed -pro hellraiser uh, for economic justice. She was very strident, so strident that a U.S. attorney once labeled her the most dangerous woman in America. Um, she came from Ireland, Cork, I believe. And uh, she came, she went to Toronto, Canada first, and uh, I believe she was age five. Or but it was before the potato famine, uh, which ravaged the Irish people. Um, and she worked as a teacher in a Michigan Catholic school, which you can see right on her face. She has the absolute look uh, of a Catholic school teacher and a labor uh, leader. <laughs> God bless her. I love her uh, in Chicago. She was she did sewing, but she lost everything she owned in that big fire that they had there. And uh, the Knights of Labor meeting took her in and then she took up the cause to uh, fight for the working poor. And her work lives on in both memory and in inspiration to folks around the country. Uh, and Sarah Nelson quoted her and I thought that was pretty awesome. <clears throat> We also have, uh, now let's get to some of the workers, okay? Stefan Medina is an airport worker who explains his situation making very little money. But by the way, he's making almost twice as much where he is than some of the people he's standing in solidarity with. And it's still really just not enough. He's supporting his sick mother who has medical bills piling up. He says he's done everything right, which don't we all feel that way? We did everything right. And why don't we deserve a living wage? This is a question that people have. This is Stefan Medina speaking to us from the Chicago action that happened yesterday. Hello, everyone. My name is Stefan Medina and I'm a PSA at Oh, Chicago O'Hare Airport and a proud local one member. Contracted airport workers like me are coming together all across the country to say, united in one voice, that we demand good jobs, good airports, and unions for all. Right now, I am awake before the sun rises to commute one and a half hours each way to and from the airport from for, for where a job where I am paid fifteen twenty five an hour. While I am grateful for an income, it is hardly enough for me to get by. I have to pay rent, pay for gas, electricity and heating in, in the cold Chicago winters, make student loan payments and I'm expected to save for the future. On top of myself, I'm responsible for providing for my mother. My mom means everything to me. She taught me to fight for what I believe in. That's right. Yeah. 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 For the past 20 years, my mom has been sick with sporadic seizures and medical bills pile up. Although I am tight on money, I will always help to support her. This isn't a reality for some, for everyone in my position. PSAs of, like me across the country are making as low as eight dollars an hour. Ooh. Having, Ooh. Right, that ain't right. Ooh. Having to choose between a bill or providing for loved ones. Everyone deserves to be paid a livable wage and compensated yeah. fairly yeah. for their work. Yeah. Yeah. $8 an hour is not going to cut it. No, it's not. 
So while I stand here expressing my heart, my own hardships, I know others may have it worse. We need a federal wage that allows us essential airport workers to thrive, not to survive. Eight dollars an hour. Eight dollars an hour. And he has to drive an hour and a half in order to get to work. That's the gas is four dollars a gallon. He has to work hours. I know he's getting 15, but some of the other ones. Uh, by the way, he said he's a passenger service assistant. Uh, in a he, That's a customer service representative, the kind of person who helps you using transport, any kind of transportation service. A lot of them work on the ground for the airlines. Some people do it at cruise lines, trains lines. Uh, they basically help, you know, they're the kind of folks, sometimes they help with your luggage. Sometimes they help with uh, just getting things from one side to the other. And sometimes they push your elderly mother uh, from one station to, you know, from across the terminal that I had, yeah, I had a really bad experience there once. And I have a feeling it was because uh, the person did not, <laughs> was exhausted, uh, exhausted, maybe not well, and um, still had to push an elderly woman across the, across the term or across the, the terminals. It wasn't, wasn't good. Let me just say these people deserve to be paid well. Um, now this kind of action has been going on for a long time. Union workers, or excuse me, airport workers have been uh, trying to unionize for Years And you'll see, I actually pulled up a video um, from when I went to Newark Airport, who had, and they were standing in solidarity with some of these airport workers. This was before, pre-pandemic. You'll see my pre-pandemic hairdo, which I was like, gee, that, maybe I'll do that again once I, <laughs> and uh, the, the video shows how just how, that it was so old, just how long these folks have been uh, fighting for like a livable wage when their companies are making so much money. So uh, take a look at this video. We're speaking to one of the workers. This is me interviewing one of uh, one of the airport workers. Newark Airport, Airport for the International Airport Workers Day of Action. And down here at Newark, we found a worker from the Boston Airport. Can you talk about what's going on for workers' rights in the Boston Airport? So in Boston, uh, it's kind of like Newark. I mean, we have uh, companies working for the same airlines, doing the same kind of work. Um, people are no benefits, no job security. Uh, very abusive working conditions, so people are fighting back against that just as here. So we're here in solidarity with the Newark Airport because they've just won a big wage increase here, and that's where we want to go in Boston. Can you talk about the abuses that airport workers are having to put up with? Uh, we've talked a lot about not having a living wage, not being able to pay rent on a full-time job. Uh, but beyond that, can you talk a little bit about what it is to work within you know, what are the abuses that we're talking about so people understand? So there's been so many, but this, I mean, so people have had a lot of wage theft in Boston. For example, people make uniform deposits, they never get them back. People get their, their paychecks being wrong. The, and these are people make, making minimum wage, a lot of them part-time, and people it's not like people can afford to lose money. And so there's been tremendous amount of wage theft. A lot of companies have been caught and paid fines, but the problems continue. There have been. Do you think the fines are commiserate with the amount of money they're making by stealing people's wage? Just well, no. I mean, that's why they continue to do it because they can make so much money at the airport. There have been a number of cases this year. Uh, women have filed cases for sexual harassment against their employers, and that continues to happen as more people hear about it and come forward. Um, there have been uh, uh, several companies in Boston that have been caught breaking labor laws. People have been fired and some of them we've been forced, we've forced the companies to put them back to work. But it's, it's, a, it's a race to the bottom. The, that's the problem is the companies find that they can make more money by competing to be cheaper and part of that means cutting corners, stealing wages and breaking the law. Do you remember when companies used to try to provide a nice service so that people would, you know, say, oh, I really like flying on United because the service is great and everyone's happy and they all they never lose my bag and I'm going to stick with United because of that. Do you remember those days? I do. I'm old enough to remember that. Uh, when they went for quality in order to secure their customer base instead of just slash and burn. Well, it's interesting. The people who push wheelchairs and move baggage and do passenger service used to work for the airlines, most of them. So people had flight privileges and they weren't high-wage jobs, but they were decent jobs. 
But what the airlines have found is that this is another way to save money. Oh, so basically they're contracting it out and then the contracting corporations are doing all of this wage theft and all of that stuff. That's right. Wow, so they, that's very, uh, it's very Machiavellian of them. Well, I, I mean, it's unfortunately, it seems like so then many. You can't, you can't hold them accountable if they're not doing it. They can say, oh, well, this middleman is the evil guy. Yeah, so many industries in our, our economy now have done that. And so the people who suffer are the people who are doing the work every day and actually make the airport run. If, they, if, if it wasn't for people doing these jobs, the airport wouldn't function. How do you find um, the people's attitudes toward the union um, these days? I know we had some, uh, and that'll be my last question. Yeah, people are excited about the union. I think people see the union as the way that they can make their jobs better and make their families more secure in this uh, with Trump in the White House and with the, the airlines doing contracting. The union is a place that people have hope that they can make it better. Thank you so much. Thank you. And that was before the pandemic. The people that the interesting part is that now all of those uh, workers who do that handling of bags, pushing of wheelchairs, helping people that way, this way uh, are contracted. How convenient for the airlines who don't have to pay health care benefits. And they don't even if they're not doing the wage theft, they don't have to be responsible for it. It's just really sickening. And these people are actually putting themselves on the front lines uh, and risking their lives for COVID. Uh, another video I have from the one of the last, that last um, uh, action that happened, that action also happened in cities across the country, one of which was in LA. We have our good, my friend, Jackie Copel, who I haven't seen in forever. So we used to both have little segments on the Young Turks Network together at the same time. And now she's out in LA and I'm here on the East Coast outside of New York and Almost never the twain shall meet. But anyway, Jackie did this great interview uh, with one of the workers there. I think it's it's very interesting. Take a look. Hi, it's Jackie Coppell, and I'm here with Tim Maddox, spokesperson for the workers at LAX. Can you tell us what's happening at LAX today? Well, at LAX, we're standing up for good union jobs uh, so we can take care of ourselves and our families. Today is a global action of airport workers all around the world. So airport workers are standing up around the world to demand that the airlines, who are making billions of dollars of profit, make these jobs good jobs for our communities. And you guys were here especially at American Airlines. Why the focus on American? Well, American Airlines and airlines like Southwest have began to, to, to uh, get rid of some of the things that we fought for. By, by going with uh, irresponsible contractors and lowering our standards and taking back some of the things that we won in our fight here at the airport. So essentially using non-union workers, is that right? Yes, using non-union workers. And those former workers had a collective bargaining agreement which included health care, family health care, and wages. And now they're being undermined by uh, companies like Southwest and American in particular have taken uh, workers back. Yeah, you said this is a global day of action. Where else is this action? You know, I know folks are watching uh, perhaps on the live stream, but where else is this action happening around the world? In, in some 40 uh, uh, different airports around the, in the world and uh, 13 different countries. Uh, people will be standing up and together for for good jobs at airports. There are all kind of uh, studies that say that some air, uh, airport workers have either been um, food insecurity or, or homeless uh, due to low wages and living in a city like Los Angeles where the rent, the cost of rent and living is really, really expensive. So you're out to... As you can see, the action just started. Uh, so what you're out to create really is to have these jobs be union jobs once again so that the workers can have a life, can, can pay for their food, for their housing, etc. cetera. Yes, that, that's what we want. We want, we want to, uh, to be able to, to come to work with, with, have some respect and dignity. We work in a, a multi-billion uh, dollar industry and we provide uh, uh, services for millions of passengers week, every week, you know, every day. And, uh, so, so, and we're making massive profits. So the airlines need to invest back in 
added to the communities by providing good jobs for us. And so is there anything that the folks at home and those watching can do to support today's action and then just the action in general in the long term? Well, yes, I think they can. Uh, they are consumers of the, of the airline. People use them to get to visit their loved ones and travel for business. They should say or they're right, American Airlines or Southwest Airlines and support the workers. That, that do the work, that keep clean the planes, that keep the airlines safe, um, guard the planes, and uh, for, for the workers, uh, for uh, for the passengers. So they make our lives better and safer, and our our job is to make their lives better and safer. Yeah. Awesome. So for those watching at home, write to American Airlines, write to Southwest, and demand that they make their workers or hire union workers so that everyone has a better life. Well, that is a great idea. I think I am going to write a letter right now. Let's see. <clears throat> Dear American, we would prefer if your airport workers didn't give us COVID because they were forced to come to work because they could not afford to take a sick day. We would like it if they weren't exhausted when pushing our disabled elderly parents across Terminal 3, and we would like them to make a living wage, be able to work 40 hours a week and afford food and have health care benefits. We know you are the same corporations who are lobbying against Medicare for all, yet you don't want to pay and give benefits to workers. What is your end game? Please give them the benefits they seek. Also, have you found my luggage yet from that trip I took to Cleveland in 1993? It is black with a red bow. Anyway, you could do for reals. You could work. Uh, you could send a letter to the airports, uh, to United, to Southwest, to American. And, and, Help those people get the job done. Coming up next, we have an interview with Bob Henley from the laborpress.org from Salon. And he is the author of this book right here, Stuck Nation. We're going to be talking to him about um, a media blackout of labor stories and the stories that you have not heard. As I said up front, if you have heard these stories anywhere, please put them in uh, the comments. I want to see if, if, uh, if you actually have heard these stories before, he's coming up next. Stay tuned. <laughs> 